Previously on The Tallest in Life, we attempted to provide some idea of what it was like navigating in and through RV parks with a large rig, which consists of our Tiffin Motor Home and our 24-foot trailer. Today's video is part two of traveling with a big rig as we answered yet another question by many of our subscribers, which is how do we handle RV parks that cannot accommodate both the motorhome and trailer as a combined unit? Yeah, that's right. Hey, if this is your first time here, our channel is about RV travel and some pretty cool motorcycle rides. So yep. if that's something that might interest you, we hope you'll smash that subscribe button right here so you won't miss future videos. Now, how we manage when an RV park can't accommodate our size rig? Yeah, and that's a real good question. First and foremost, we know in advance which RV parks can and cannot accommodate the full rig before we arrive. Yep. So if they can fit the 40 or 41 foot motor home, mm -hmm. we determine if they have overflow parking or trailer parking. If they don't, then we simply don't book that RV park. By the way, next week's video, we'll be primarily talking about finding RV sites to yeah. fit our size rig because that too has been something that you guys have requested. So stay tuned for that. I happened to be in New York on business when Daryl arrived at the location for this video. Let's have a look at all the fun I missed. We're about to arrive at our next RV park and this is the park where we have to disconnect the trailer. Turn right on B-Mill Road. This RV park is located in Northwest Washington, a small town called Brennan, Washington. I think it's about two hours from Seattle. And by the way, this will be the smallest RV park we've ever stayed in. But we already knew that ahead of time due to our prior research, which included photos from Google Earth. After checking in, we put our plan in motion to secure the trailers and then set up the RV site. Hello? Hey, Bill, I was going to ask Andy to look out for me because I'm going to squeeze by y'all. And there's this, okay. see this roof right here? This on, on their on their you property? Move over. You know what? If you do that, it would make it easier for me. Yeah, so we got a plan to unhook the trailers. But first, I'm going to pull up here and offload the car and the bike. I'll show you how we're going to park the trailers. Got to take our time, no rush. And what you see in front of me is really just about the entire size of the park. It only has 25 sites all back in. You're gonna have to make this turn afterwards though. Okay, what we just did is just unload the trailer. And now we're about to park it. I've got to take it around this curve and then back it down. Should be pretty easy to be honest with you. I should have never said that. Swing it wide right here and then hard right. Again, I really take advantage of this 60 degree wheel cut that's on the tip and power glide chassis. It does help in some of these tight places. Now I'm just going to pull forward in order to straighten up. And I'll be the first to tell you that where we are backing and parking our trailers is not what I'd call the most conventional overflow parking like most parks may have. But hey, we were glad that the Cove RV Park could work with us and had a spot for the trailers. I know this is slow go, sort of like watching molasses flow in the winter. But when back in these land yachts, 
down narrow roadways. We take our time and slow is just my speed. Oh, and in my opinion, having a spotter is crucial for this undertaking. Again, it's not hard. Just don't allow yourself to get in a hurry. And the more eyes you have watching, the better. Okay, I'm about to arrive at my spot. And in case you didn't notice, we just backed this trailer the length of a football field without any issues. Up here in these mountains and these hills is where the fugitive uh, Johnny Rambo was hiding out. <laughs> Looks just like the movie, does it not? It does. Look at those mountains. I gotta get in closer to that. And now we'll chalk the wheels. And then disconnect the trailer. All that remains now is setting up the RV in my designated site. And then we're going to give you some bonus video by watching Andy and Belle back and park their trailer in the same area. Now for the bonus video, as Andy pulls his 70 feet of fun in line so he too can park and disconnect his trailer. Andy's wife, Belle, acts as his spotter. She could probably outdrive the two of us put together. She holds a CDL license and drove 18 wheelers for over a decade before retiring. And as you can see, once again, slow and easy is the ticket to taking care of yourself your equipment, as well as those around you. Once the trailer's in place, yeah. chalk the wheels and disconnect the trailer. After a great, safe day of travel with the trailer stored, the final piece is arriving at their RV site. Sorry I missed out yeah. on all the fun. Yeah, you know, I hear you, but it really wasn't that big of a deal. You know, we took our time, we did what we needed to do in order to take care of our equipment, and therefore, everything really went according to plan. 
Well, we hope the video provided some insight and answered the question on how we handle a big RV in a small RV park. So to see more video, click the one on your screen. Hope to see you there. Until next time, be, be well, well and stay, stay safe. safe.